Hawaii life in the 1800s was a lot different, but they had the same needs as we do for food, housing, and clothing, which means there were similar jobs and professions for career changers back then. It just took them a little longer to get on our show. Here's Tom Woods to tell you more about their mission. The mission of Hawaiian Mission Houses is really to uh, encourage dialogue about the contributions or role of missionaries in the history of Hawaii and how that relates to contemporary issues today. This is the place uh, that was the headquarters for the Sandwich Island Mission and that goes back to 1820 when the first uh, group of missionaries arrived here and uh, all of the goods basically were delivered here and then they were dispersed to the other island stations around the Hawaii Islands. Well, this is the Levi Chamberlain House, and uh, this was built in 1831, and it was built as both a residence for uh, Levi Chamberlain and his wife Mariah and their uh, growing family, but it was also intended as an expanded depository or warehouse for uh, mission goods because the mission had grown dramatically in the last 10 years since it first came here as, as more missionaries arrived and so they needed more goods and more space to store those goods to supply them. The oldest house in the state of Hawaii that still exists today is over here. It's an, built in 1821 and it was built of wood and so that was somewhat unique at the time in Hawaii. So if you come here uh, between Tuesday and Saturday, tours uh, begin at 11 and then they're on the hour until 3 o'clock which is the last tour of the day. And tours are $10 for adults and if you're Kamaaina, it's uh, $8. Well, come on in then, I'll show you around. So what happens in this area is it's an orientation area. So very briefly, you get a broad uh, introduction sort of to the arrival of Captain Cook, then later the fall of the Kapu system, and then the arrival of the missionaries. Uh, one of the wonderful things about this space too is this diorama that was built in the uh, late 1960s and still one of my favorite parts, I think, of this exhibit. And it shows you what this landscape uh, might have looked like uh, when the missionaries arrived in 1820. So by the 1850s, um, basically all the companies of uh, the missionaries had arrived. This diorama shows you um, how the area had changed in the last 30 years. And uh, the, the main building here, of course, is Kawai Ha'o Church that was uh, designed by uh, Hiram Bingham, completed in the early 1840s. And the big building over here is a three-story um, bindery or print shop. Printing was a huge thing in Hawaii. By 1850, they were one of the most literate nations in the world, having had no written language at all in, until um, the 1820s. It's really important to understand that missionaries had trouble learning the Hawaiian language when they first came, and they had to work closely with the elite and others to learn that language and then to help figure out how to spell it and develop an orthography for it. And Chief Kale Moku, James Honeywell, and the printer Elisha Loomis were the first ones to print a sheet of paper in this print shop. The printing press uh, was really key in the history of Hawaii because that's what allowed uh, Hawaiians um, to learn to read uh, so quickly. This is the 1821 Mission House, also called the Frame House. It was referred to the, as the Frame House because it was built of wood. And this was the primary headquarters building for all of the, the Mission House. This is the one they were always referring to. There was one young boy, William Beals, who was just amazingly proficient with learning English. He became Ka'ahumanu's personal tutor. Uh, this 12-year-old boy was teaching the most powerful woman in Hawaii at the age of 12. The parlor is where the family would gather to have uh, morning and evening prayers. It's where they would uh, often have uh, music. Uh, it's where they would welcome guests. And you can hear in the background, uh, Hawaii Aloha is playing. And that's a, a song that was composed by Lorenzo Lyons uh, at the request of uh, Kamehameha IV because it was, the tune was one that Kamehameha IV really liked. He wanted to have Hawaiian words set to it. And of course, this is a song that talks about love of place and love of home, and it's very emotional. It's what many people in Hawaii uh, join hands to at the end of a program or something and sway back and forth, and it's a real feeling of togetherness. And very many people know that that was composed by a missionary. So when the missionaries came, one of the big parts of uh, worship uh, was hymnody. And um, hymns were an important way of connecting people to the messages that they were trying to impart for Christianity. 
Hawaiians um, had a, a love for music uh, and a uh, love for dance, of course, and but it didn't have polyphony or many voices and it didn't have harmony in it. And that's what hymns brought and the Hawaiians absolutely fell in love with hymns. And so because of that connection, we do a lot of musical programs here. This is Dr. Garrett Judd's, what he called dispensatory. It was part a uh, medical examining office and also part apothecary shop. And um, this is where he would mix medicines or where his Hawaiian assistants would mix medicines. One of the important things that Judd did too was that he translated the first medical book into Hawaiian. So this is the kitchen and this is of course where they would have uh, cooked their food. This is a, a beehive oven over here where the bread would have been baked. We're really excited that Mark Noguchi and the Peely Group is going to be coming to operate this cafe. He's worked for a town uh, restaurant, he's worked for Chef Mavro. So soon he'll be here serving some really, really good Hawaiian food with a real twist that is really unique. In part two, we'll preview the upcoming Cemetery Poo Poo Theater performances that will take place the last two weekends in June. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.